Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, MS Pits. This is Ukraine War breaking news update for the 22nd of March 2024. Still hanging on to the 22nd. Uh, it's a late night one and most of you thought I would have uh, finished demolishing that bottle of wine. Uh, just finished watching the new iteration of Roadhouse on Amazon Prime. Thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, but I had to, like half an eye was always on what's going on in Moscow at the moment and I have to do something on it it's just it's a, it's a big piece of news the conclusion I have at the moment is that and most of you know something will have happened those of you who don't let's give you my conclusion first before going forward with all the data my conclusion is this is a genuine terrorist attack on uh, a place in Moscow that has nothing to do with Ukraine and I don't think is even a false flag attack. However, there are theories of all of those going on. There, there are, There's so much data being thrown out there, so much confusion because there are so many theories about what has happened. But that's what I think. I think is a genuine terrorist attack. And as ever, when there are claims out there, even if it's um, a much smaller thing going on on the front lines or or bit of disinformation here or a trawler getting blown up there it's always about probability so you look at all the data and you and you try and and you work out your background knowledge this is a Bayesian probability analysis you have your background knowledge about how the world works you have your form so your prior probability so what do we know about these sorts of events without looking at the actual data of these events you know right okay do does Russia have form for false flag activities yes uh, you, you plug all these things in you think okay before we look at the data what's the most likely hypothesis as to what has happened and then you look at the data and you kind of add all those things up together and you compare your competing hypotheses and you come out with a well it's more probably this than that but who knows and blah 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 anyway so having done all that in a very intuitive sense I like I haven't actually plugged numbers into a, a Bayesian formula my intuitive probability assessment is that this is probably a, a real genuine terrorist attack but it's not clear-cut and and there, there's lots of confusion okay so it's worth knowing and this is going back to the prior prob probability it's worth knowing that some weeks ago there were claims and I reported these claims that there was an imminent terrorist attack in Moscow that was going to happen. So this is interesting, you know, whether it's Dutch news, JL is like saying, well, look at this, the Dutch embassy have, have, have said this. Well, actually, the US embassy and the UK, you know, this was sort of common knowledge a couple of weeks ago, except nothing really happened. So everyone's like, OK, whatever, move on to the next thing. But let, let's remember that that was stated a few weeks ago as you can see here from Forbes US embassy warns of imminent extremist attack in Moscow uh, US embassy and consulates in Russia security alert avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours okay so it's a couple of weeks later but I think this is this is worth bearing in mind okay we're talking about large gatherings this was a concert hall called the Crocus City Hall I think it was indeed a large gathering and there was a terrorist attack. So, okay, it, it fits into the remit of this being a terrorist attack. Okay, so what happened? Essentially, and I can't show you, there's so much footage. If you want to go and see footage of people being shot and horrible things, then, you know, go and look at Twitter and uh, or Telegram. Plenty of stuff out there. Obviously, I can't show you that stuff, uh, nor would I want to particularly. So it's reported there were five terrorists different claims for three are initially four five lots of different numbers rogs Gvardia special forces arrived at the building and this is one of the 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 bits of data but again can we trust this claim that that they arrived an hour after the shooting uh, i was watching bbc news they report they arrived quickly so who knows but the false flag theory is that the russians themselves did this to try and for example um, up the ante and then you know you've got uh, the missile attacks last night you have Peskov today saying that it's a war and it's not special military operation or it's a de facto war uh, and then you've got the idea of mobilization being sort of out touted a little bit slipped into the to, into into the news and this then if there is a false 
rationale for this being a false flag, then it is because it would allow Russia to go, right, look, the Ukrainians have done this. Let's let's go to war properly with the Ukrainians. Everything else so far has just been a special military operation. Now we're going to go crazy. We're going to have a mass mobilization. We're going to go to war. So that's a kind of rationale for this being a Ukrainian attack. But I don't think anyone actually genuinely really believes it's a Ukrainian attack. At the moment, things could change. There are... I, I, I say there aren't anyone. There are rumours on the internet, of course. Uh, but I think most serious analyses discount the Ukrainians at the moment, which is good news, right? So reported there are five terrorists, says next to Rodskvardia special forces arrived at the building an hour after the shooting started. Cellular communications in Moscow are not working well. Helicopters were sent to extinguish the fire. Also reported a major failure in the work of the manager Telegram. So... Okay, so there's fire on the roof of this large concert hall, and in the initial reports were there hand grenades that caused fire. Then there, there are now claims that the terrorists had uh, plastic containers of flammable liquid in their backpack. So whatever, the place is on fire. So an apparent terrorist attack on a club shopping centre in Moscow. Actually, it's it's more of a a concert hall uh, and attached like shops and all it's a bit of everything in moscow before a performance started dozens of wounded and dead there was also an explosion in the buildings on fire early video videos show multiple men three per state media that's now been upped in camo shooting rifles the next problem for russia's emergency services says tim said tim white right at the beginning of this at the Crocus City Hall in moscow region is that there are thought to be about 100 people inside the shopping center while it burns firefighters cannot start distinguishing it until special forces clear the venue of the terrorists so lots of videos extreme caution you know you can go and check out what's happened but but the initial claims have been that there are over 40 dead and 100 injured that could well go up uh, there's uh, as as here 130 injured he says a little bit later uh, pretty horrific stuff people getting shot um there were at least five gunmen, say, says Tim White. I've heard more than one. Again, this is four hours ago now, though. More than one witness say that terrorists all have beards. So there's a lot of claims about beards and looking Eastern or Oriental was was a claim like that that term was used. Uh, other people saying they were Caucasian, and by that, that's not like how we might use the term Caucasian. That means from the Caucasus. Uh, so the, the inference that they're, or the, sorry, the implication that. These might be Chechen or maybe further to the east. Some uh, Ingusheti has been mentioned. Special forces have entered the buildings on the outskirts, uh, but the claim is that four, gu four gunmen have escaped. Um, all public events in Moscow this weekend have been cancelled. Uh, shooting was heard and um Actually, some of the, some of the footage is really pretty scary. People in the whole it's quite a big auditorium, and uh, people are like getting out. There's obviously the idea that it's an emergency, and then they got into that large area and were shooting people inside that auditorium. And then people, you know, who were recording this and ducking down. Yeah, pr pretty pretty horrible stuff. Um, yeah, uh, so lots of reaction to this in international media. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, I guess, well, newsworthy because there's so much footage of it. And that obviously plays well, plays well. I, I don't mean that in I mean, people died here. It's hor horrific. No, you know, no matter what you think about Russia and Russians, the these are innocent people going to a concert, terrorist at, at, uh, action here and people dying that didn't need to die. So, you know, uh, that's happened, and some of the footage is is pretty horrible. But but you know you you can see this that the news mainstream media would be all over this. Interestingly, in a much bigger, quicker way than they were all over or weren't all over the terrible terrorist activities of 150 odd uh, munitions being sent into Ukraine this morning. Hmm, interesting. Um, but anyway. So some then started claiming it's a false flag attack. Um, Ukraine says it's a false flag attack. Probably not the most sensible thing to say publicly right now, uh, which is interesting. So the, the Ukrainians came out and initially said very quickly that it wasn't us. We had nothing to do with it. It's obviously right. And then lots of claims that it's a false flag attack. I probably would have, as Tim White says, they kept quiet about that and, and let's see what the Russians eventually say because there was lots of talk about it being Islamic State 
And I think it's better to just let the Russians get on with, with making their accusa- accusations over there without kind of making making possibly um, counterproductive claims from a, from the Ukrainian point of view. Um, so Islamic State have claimed responsibility, says Tim White here sometime later. This is only 47 minutes ago. Right, we'll come to that claim in a second. So anyway, terrorists set fire to Croker City Hall building in Moscow using gasoline. They had containers with fuel in their backpacks, says Nexter. The Russian Emergencies Ministry said the fire was localised and they were trying to extinguish it. Um, now, then a claim came out later and this has done the rounds. And the issue is it's slightly blurred as well. But the FSB have driven a minibus, quote, with old Ukrainian license plates to the Moscow shopping mall. So this then feeds into the idea that it's a false flag uh, attack, that, that this minibus is driven in with old Ukrainian number plates. Apparently, Ukraine will be blamed for creating a reason for mobilization, as was predicted, was the original claim. I'm putting all these out there and then kind of giving you answers to them. So hopefully it puts some of the claims to bed. Now, as Defmon says, it looks like these are actually Belarusian number plates and not Ukrainian number plates. So these might be erroneous false flag claims from pro-Ukrainian uh, people. As Ilya Pononomarenko says, yes, Ukrainian infiltrators and hitmen on a mission in Moscow would 100% certainly be moving around on a van with Ukrainian license plates. What's laughable about this? I don't get you people. Um, FYI, even with this very convenient blur, so they do blur it out, the, the Russian media, this is not what Ukra- Ukrainian license plates look like, of course. And so that could put that claim to bed. As Myra of Kiev says, uh, Kiev, sorry, the those are Belarusian license plates. The end, right? Stop that. Um so that's that's one claim. Then another claim has been that ISIS claims responsibility for the terror attack in Moscow. Now, this claim still it is still the main claim on mainstream media. I've just watched the BBC News. I, I was really interested to see how the BBC as a, as a mainstream media outlet would report this. And there are a few things that are like, it's, it's amazing when you, when you keep a handle on things on social media. And I, this happened when the Moscow was sunk, where I... I Many of you won't have been following me then, but back when the the flagship Russian Black Sea Fleet ship was sunk, I reported that something like eight hours before mainstream media reported it. And the reason why is because social media is a goldmine of open source intelligence. So there were there were people who had uploaded the actual um, Mayday signals of the Moskva that you can get off the internet just almost straight away and there were the these claims and that claim you could piece these things together and say yeah it really does look like the Moscow has sunk and the mainstream media because they are rightly so in 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 a way they're beholden to publication regulation and or publishers regulations and so they have to be very careful to fact check so they they can't be sued and all sorts of stuff and so that takes a lot of time and their teams fact check and then eventually they're like right we're, we're happy that this is bona fide and we we will now do a news segment on that whereas eight hours before that i was like yeah it looks like the Moscow's been sunk because obviously i i you know i try and be accurate but i'm not beholden to the same kind of regulation as mainstream media is and so you can get your information far quicker but you have to also understand that the information you get from your socials, from the internet, might well be wrong, might well be of dodgy provenance. So, you know, as long as you understand all the caveats, actually, mainstream media, you, you end up, if you guys, you guys are like me because we spend a lot of time together, right? But um, you, you end up not watching mainstream media because it's actually way behind what what we all find out like i'm telling you stuff as soon as i find it out pretty much and mainstream media often tag behind that so anyway going back to this claim so the reason i was saying the bbc was saying isis have made this claim and they 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 then did say a little bit later when they spoke to the live correspondent when steve rosenberg had done a pre-recorded bit and it's like isis have made a claim about this and then he said that the, the, the Russians hadn't confirmed whether it was ISIS or not. Anyway, so ISIS claimed responsibility for the terror attack. So that, that's another bit of data to throw in there. However, 
It's not quite as easy as that because, and this is where you go back to prior probabilities. So John Ridge says, says John Ridge here says, would add that ISIS or IS and its affiliates have a tendency to claim responsibility for attacks that they did not commit. So this isn't quite definitive, although ISIS K or an affiliate remain the likeliest candidates. So although ISIS have claimed this, bear in mind that they don't always, it doesn't always match up. So next to here saying the ISIS terrorist group has claimed responsibility for the terrorist attack in Moscow. This is reported by Russian media with reference to the terrorist official social networks. Update, though, a little bit later, the widespread ISIS statement about involvement in a terrorist attack in Moscow. So this one here is based on the group's outdated template and may be fake. Russian media, which earlier claimed ISIS involvement, also refute this information. So actually, no one's 100% sure whether ISIS really did do this. Rob Lee says, and this is going back um, only half an hour, a quote, a US official tells CBS News that US has intelligence confirming that Islamic State's claims of responsibility and that they have no reason to doubt those claims. The US official also confirmed that the US provided intelligence to Russia. So that that that's where actually it's in the best interest for the US to share intelligence because actually this is a kind of a common enemy and it gets Ukraine off the hook, you know, rightly so. And so therefore it you know, this is where the US would go if this has indeed happened, would go this is yep, Russia aren't our best mates at the moment, but actually this is one of those opportunities one of those uh, situations where it is Definitely beneficial for everyone that we share this intelligence with Russia. And then a quote from the New York Times, uh, a different article, New York Times article, you, quote, US officials say they believe that the Islamic State was responsible for the attack shortly after the group took responsibility. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and then US officials confirming ISIS-K's claim of responsibility and the Moscow attack, uh, again, according to, to New York Times. So different... Um, evaluations of the ISIS claims there. Again, take everything with a pinch of salt. You've got another claim that's gone out, which is coming from a Russian a Telegram channel, which is pretty reliable, generally, uh, reporting that Russian security forces are looking for three people with, from Ingushetia. These are, and then gives them names, eyewitnesses report, blah, 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 blah. And then, yeah, here are some people that are reportedly responsible for the attack and then Radu Hosu the Romanian um not quite, is he OSINT well an, an analyst says these guys have been dead for weeks the information that Russian agencies are looking for them is false so okay I, I put it out there but then just to let you know that that is fake um at least according to him so Anton Gerashchenko then says and this is let's have a look last edited 20 past 9 so this is a couple of hours old terrorist attack on Crocus City Hall what is known at the moment 40 people are killed more than 100 injured FSB and governor of Moscow region said whether the participants of the attack remained in the building is unclear it's only known that special forces forces of the national guard went inside Shot Telegram channel reported the detention of one suspect in the attack of Crocus City Hall. So that's interesting. Not seen that reported too many places elsewhere. It was reported that a minibus with old style Ukrainian license plates was checked in the parking lot at Crocus City Hall and that a white Renault Logan with fair license plates is, in, is being searched for. Visitors to all shopping centres in Moscow are being evacuated. In St. Petersburg, an unknown black box was discovered in the Galleria uh, shopping centre. People were evacuated from there. Also in St. Petersburg, police are closing bars. Uh, Vajny Istori Telegram channel, citing the source close to the operational headquarters, reported that the Russian special services have ruled out the version about the involvement of Ukraine or ISIS in the terrorist attack. So, interesting, although I think the ISIS claim still remains much more prevalent. I don't think that has been properly ruled out. In fact, I think a lot of people, as Rob Lee's just been reporting, think it is the most probable explanation for the events. Okay, 
Uh, so Max23 here, this is under an hour ago, reporting from the Washington Post. Recent intelligence reporting indicated that ISIS-K terrorist group was active inside Russia. The US embassy in Moscow said on March 7th that it was monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow. So again, that that's you know, referring back to those previous um, embassy claims and intelligence claims that there, it was an imminent terrorist attack a couple of weeks back that ended up not being imminent, but a couple of weeks later, perhaps. Dash cam footage from a car that was in the parking lot of the Crocus Concert Hall in Moscow has been released, showing what other eyewitnesses have also described, which is at least six bearded gunmen getting out of a minibus before they almost immediately started to run into the building and shoot at the concert goers. Again, this leads into this another data point to suggest that actually ISIS or some kind of Islamic terrorist group might be responsible for, at least is more probable than, say, Ukrainian group. War translated, Dmitry says, as always, the Nazi propagandist mixes all the crap together, seems to be commenting on a terrorist attack, but cannot not mention killing Ukrainians. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Why are they so fixated on Ukraine? So never too far from all the claims will be insinuations concerning Ukraine and, and be wary of that. Now, uh, the claim this, uh, and I think this is counterproductive, but this is again, uh, I, I say again, this is from four hours ago now. And I, I presume, well, I don't know, but you would think they might be wanting to take these claims back if possible. Terrorist attack in Moscow was a provocation by Russian special services on Putin's orders. Its purpose is to justify total mobilization. The Ukrainian GUR report, so in Ukrainian intelligence, that's what they're claiming, quotes Pes Peskov's statements shortly before the attack. So the idea that this was a war, we moved into war territory, not just special military operation, was just a full start of a planned special operation. Now, you can understand why they would say this, because actually, the whole, that whole theory makes quite a lot of sense. It seems fairly plausible. We know that Russians are, have done false flag attacks before, indeed, with bombings on similar places, going back to, uh, what was it, um, Georgian or Chechen war, and, and what, you know the the blaming or with the apartment buildings and then all the different times where they've done false flag attacks that are very similar to this they've got form right so you think they've got form uh, it fits in with the whole it's it's not dissonant with with any of the other kind of ideas that we have so the mobilization Peskov's claim etc cetera, etc cetera. so it all fits in with that it coheres uh, we call it in philosophy, it's called the coherent theory of um, epistemology. So, you know, if, if things cohere with everything else, then it's a, it's a higher probability of being true, um, obviously. Um, so, you know, it is a plausible theory, but I, I just don't think it is a false flag because I think all the other data points suggest that it was a genuine um, terrorist attack uh, that had previously been um, predicted by U.S. embassy and other embassies and, uh, and and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that's the latest as far as I'm concerned. And with the information I have, all you need to do is go on to uh, to Twitter and or, or Telegram, or whatever. And there is so much data out there, and it's trying to wade through all this data tr to try and work out what the what the most plausible explanation for these events really is. Uh, yeah. Uh, death toll has risen apparently latest so this is only five minutes ago OSINT technical saying death toll has risen to 62 Russian forces are working to recover bodies from the unburnt portions of the building multiple people reportedly died from smoke inhalation after being trapped by the fire that must be terrible um, uh, just seeing if if there's anything else to uh, share with you but uh, um, anyway that's that's all I'm gonna say for now. I I have, you know, not not much of the night left. So that's me done. Too much content today, but I I, I felt I had to um had to share that with you. Anyway, take care. Uh, all the very best. And um, even though this happened in Russia, and we might not be fans of Russia, these are human beings who have lost their lives needlessly. Um, violence like this is is. Is, is horrific isn't it and um, 
you know, you you want your you wouldn't want your family members to be caught up in that or yourself. So you know, bear that in mind. Always think as humanistically as possible. Um, I think in terms of you know what happens and let's give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, if we can, uh, I think that's the the best way forward. Anyway, uh, thank you for for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, take care, and I'll speak to you tomorrow.